All right, hello and um, welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined from a land down under by Mark Hodgson, who is in Sydney, Australia. Good, good morning, John. How are you? So good afternoon. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's good afternoon for me and it's good morning. And what you always love about when you're doing stuff with Australia is I'm on, a, I'm on one day and Mark's on a completely different day. So it's almost like time travel, really. It's quite amazing. Jay, Mark's in the future and I'm in, the, I'm in his past. So anyway, um, uh, what we're going to talk about today is building your personal brand. Uh, and Mark, you know, helps people, helps people grow and, and get there as a mentor, a facilitator, a speaker, and really helps people in many different ways. But today we want to talk about building your brand. So maybe, Mark, if we jump straight into it, uh, why is it important for everybody to have a brand? And what are some of the, mis what are some of the reasons why people don't focus on their brand? Yeah, okay, great, great question, John. I think, I think the, main, the main, I talk about helping people build their professional yeah. brand and i think probably probably the best way to think of that it's like uh, it's like having a shop window you, you need to build a shop window for the world to see you and whilst the, you know, your professional brand it's not exclusively a a sort of digital conversation you can do mm -hmm. it through speaking and, and, and writing and doing a whole load of different things uh principally what we're talking about and i guess the gap for most people listening to this is having a, a strong online professional brand um, and for most of us, um, that typically looks like having a, a, a strong profile on LinkedIn. So the, basically, we need to build a shop window to the world that, that really showcases um, you know, uh, what, what we know, um, who we help, how we add value and why we are different. Because the reality is, uh, you know, it's no mystery whether we're in Australia or, or the States. It's a very, very competitive marketplace. Uh, and obviously, one of the big shifts of, of, of COVID that we're experiencing is, uh, you know, there's lots of conversation about working from home and people working remotely. Um, and that is both obviously an opportunity, but also potentially a challenge, because if we're if we're no longer in, a, in an office or in a, um, in a marketplace where people keep seeing us physically, you know, how do we, we need to be showing up as well with us with a strong uh, professional brand that showcases those four things and I think the um, you know I talk about this idea that we actually need to move from being subject matter experts many of your listeners most of the people listeners will be experts professionals at some level sure. uh, which is great and and most of us uh, when I'm 56 uh, now a lot of us are at that kind of age we've basically grown up in an analog world and we where we traded on reputation you know length of um, length of service experience if you like we trade in our expertise and what we need to do is actually turn our expertise into influence uh, by building that shop window so that people uh, know where to find us what we're about who we help uh, and then they can transact with us employ us promote us um, or engage us depending on what we're doing uh, and the second part of your question john the the, the biggest barrier for most people um is uh, i guess a nervousness around this it's essentially about confidence a lot of people yeah. i work with and i work with a lot of people through this work uh, they, they lack the confidence to kind of put themselves inverted commas out there um mm -hmm. and whilst there's lots of things we can do and th different uh, different methodologies and techniques that's actually the biggest gap if we can get over that gap of actually being more confident um then then we're actually off to the races in terms of building that online shop window where you can basically put your reputation it's about having a reputation uh, in a digital world as opposed to a reputation uh, in an analog world and, and that's that's why i think every professional needs to do, to do this yeah and and it's and it's interesting mark because uh, of what you just said there about people's reluctance because i mean i've talked to a lot of people about this uh, and not just to do with brand but just basically to do with everything to do with your career and obviously personal life too but uh, um, definitely career is the imposter syndrome right is where people lose confidence in this the skills and the experiences and everything that they have and they feel like oh well it's all very well for you mark to, to build your brand because you've got all this great experience but i don't and and people are going to find me out really quickly and that's and and i really think people underestimate how much experience insight and uh, that they have yeah no and that that's that's absolutely right i mean the the the, the thing 
I think the other thing is, and, and yeah, if we move this, so once we've got clarity on what we're about, mm -hmm. um, which is not a small thing, there's a bit of bit of work to do to get that sort of what we call message clarity, which is usually an editing process, by the way. It, it's not finding what you do. It's, 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 it's working out. There's seven things you can do. But what are the one or two things you're really, really good at? And I think almost everyone has that. And what most of us do is actually we confuse ourselves because we try and do too many things or try and talk about too many things. And then we come across as a generalist. Uh, and really, mm. we, we ideally want to come across as some degree of specialist or influencer in a, in a, in a, specific, in a specific place. Um, so that's one aspect. The second aspect is really important. Uh, you know, and I say we talk a lot about you know, link, linked. I always talk about LinkedIn because you don't need, you don't, yeah. you go. for most retail users of this, what we're talking about, they don't need their own website. I've got my own website, you've got your own website. And I don't think we're not talking about building your own website. So the, the, the common platform that, you know, pretty much every professional on the planet who you want to talk to is on is obviously LinkedIn. And it's really a quick question how do we build that, 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 that better? But the piece of, uh, and we do that through creating, getting that message clarity, then creating content and sharing content through LinkedIn posts, little videos, things like that. Um, and I think the thing that people trip themselves up over is thinking that the level of information or content that needs to be shared there needs to be, you know, like MBA, professorial, you know, highly academic and clever, clever, clever. And it just doesn't. It just doesn't. It basically, if you can... Yeah, and, and I spend a lot of my time, I do a lot of work around thought leadership and creating models mm -hmm. and very, very clever thinking. That's gorgeous. And it's lovely. I love it to bits. But the reality is what I've learned doing this for 10 years after a 25 year corporate career. It's actually you know, the 101, 102 level of stuff, if you like, um, if you express that, share that and do so in a way that's unique to you, basically sharing what you're about not just your expertise your experience but also your essence your own life experience if you can basically populate sort of common uh, and probably to you relatively basic ideas in a way that resonate with an audience who likes you um, there's actually a massive amount of value in that so we, we outthink ourselves we try and be too clever we try and if you like mm -hmm. hit it out of the hit it out of the ballpark with every swing thing and we've got to create some gorgeous amazing piece of content and we actually don't what we do need to do is create short content um the, you know, the, the, through, through the lens of who we are and who we serve, and it might be a specific market you're in, you might be a dentist, you might be a construction manager, um, you might be a pet, stop shop, a pet store owner, it doesn't matter, but that you, will, you will have your own natural community of people who potentially you can help if you've got expertise in that space. And that's, that, I think the key is, so we don't, the key to this, we don't need to be clever, clever. And once we understand that, and we can have a bit of fun, and really we're just starting a conversation, um, then good things happen because every yeah. and there's not a even even this world of artificial intelligence and robots and you know uh, um, you know uh, drones going to Mars and all that stuff you know there's still not a sales conversation in the world that hasn't started with some kind of connection and that conversation so there's still not a sale in the world that hasn't started with some kind of human to human conversation and that's really all we're trying to do build that shop window showcase who we are what we're about and start conversations if we understand it at that level. And not think we have to create a website and, and they look gorgeous all the time and be really brilliant all the time. I think people can perhaps relax into this a bit and actually find that it can work for them. Yeah, and I think those are great points, uh, really great points, Mark, because I think sometimes when you, let's just say we're talking about LinkedIn, when you come across somebody's profile on LinkedIn, and as you say, it sounds like not just that they have an MBA, but it sounds like it was written by an MBA, right? I mean, and and that can sometimes kind of switch you off a little bit because it seems either intimidating or very unpersonal. You're not really getting a flavor of who this person is, as opposed to what you said, if it's more natural and authentic and not, you know, not trying to trying to be more real as opposed to being really clever. I think there's I think there's more you create more of a, an immediate connection or at least you have the opportunity to yeah it's it's it's, it's about being conversational and not, and not academic and i and i think and, and the, the big element of the conversation so the conversational piece is showing up consistently so again we don't need to knock we don't need to knock the, the ball out of the ballpark yeah ev, ev, on every swing what we do need to do is show up consistently so what, what i reckon that looks like is probably uh, posting on linkedin one or two posts a week now for those who don't who aren't all over linkedin i mean linkedin posts are very short there if you like they're, they're they're like a little snackable piece of, of content um i think they're limited to 1300 characters what does that look like that's probably you know 200 words maximum 
uh, with a nice mm -hmm. image, just an idea. I mean, for example, I, sh I shared today a LinkedIn post. It was about this idea of having a not a to-do list, but a to-don't list. So there's five things I think we should stop doing that kind of that get us hung up. It's a simple idea. Um, I got a nice image, which I did on Canva, um, which is mm -hmm. you, know, you can get for free. It's brilliant. And once you've played around with that for half an hour, you'll realize, actually, I can start, I can create little images and put a little, a little text on there. Um, and, and, and I can start to do this. So, you know, that took me you know, 20 minutes to write. Okay, I do this a lot, so I'm pretty good. But even if it took you an hour to do one initially, if you spent a couple of hours a week doing that, and you'll get really, really quick at it. And you'll, you will be able to do it once you've got a bit of a theme, a bit of a message, a bit of a, you know, a bit of a campaign, if you like. You'll get to the point where you can do that, you know, in 20, 25 minutes, yeah. twice a week. So that's an hour. Let's, 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 let's call it 90 minutes a week. And here's the point. Um, you know, if you're, if, is, 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 you know, we've always got to be asking ourselves as entrepreneurs and business people, don't we? Yeah. Is that a good use of our time? And I would yes. argue that spending 90 minutes, you know, an hour and a half out of a 40 hour, 50 hour work week to create that brand that slowly over time builds your reputation and starts those business conversations. I reckon that's a really smart use of 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah. it's about consistency and it's about, it's, it's about consistency of turning up rather than doing it for two weeks going, oh, I don't like this. This doesn't work. I'm going to stop doing it, which I think is crazy yeah. because it ain't going away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and nothing works immediately anyway. Um, and I think to your point, though, I think because sometimes a lot of people outsource this to marketing or they'll find somebody online to do it all for them. And that's that's fine. I mean, that's certainly an option. However, going back to your point about how you consistently show up, right? If you if you just outsource all of this stuff, then the chances are in your other communications, the other places you are, you're going to have a bit of a contrast, which is never a good yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, it, it will jar. And I, and I, it's interesting because the people, there's, there, I mean, there's lots of conversation at the moment about you know should people be using LinkedIn pods or accelerators and, and, and all those kind of things. And I, and I, and I run a small those uh, for, and we've got about thirty people. Um, and for those who don't know, link that they're basically where everyone gets together and shares posts and likes and comments on each other's posts within a relatively short period of time. Uh, the idea being that they get a bit, if you like, gives them a bit of a shove, if you like, into the mm -hmm. into the world of algorithm, uh, uh, algorithms, and hopefully get, they get a little bit more coverage than they might naturally, if you like. But to me, even though I run it, to me that's not the point. The, the point the point is not about likes and and, and comments. The point is that it helps people to create what I or build what I call a, a content creation habit. Um, and the whole, the, I think the second thing about this idea of creating creating content with it, which sort of aligns with who you are and what you do and who you help, mm -hmm. um, is it actually makes you think and it sharpens your thinking um, and it evolves your thinking. So yeah, the content it's not just about if you like. You know, it's not about putting little adverts about you into the world. It's about refining your thinking. Because the only way you can write is, is, is you know, thinking is right, right. So writing is thinking. So the only way you can create content is to think. A lot of us don't think. Uh, we get busy. We do stuff we know how to do, but we don't think. And it's when we think that we evolve. And I think that evolution of thinking is what's really important in terms of what I talked about, that idea of that turns the, the expert uh, into an influencer. Because you're thinking, you're thinking about, okay, um, this is what I know. This is what I've seen in the past. All this stuff that's happening now, for example, around COVID, what does that mean? If I interrogate that, what's going on with previous experience, I can turn that into wisdom and then I can write mm -hmm. about that wisdom. So I'm evolving. So it's not, it's not to your point, it's not you outsourcing this kind of, it works in one sense, but in another sense, it doesn't because it doesn't evolve you as a thinker. Um, and, and, yeah, and, and, and I just, I just want to underline that Mark, because I think that's an incredibly important point that you just made there, because sometimes people think, Oh, you're having to do this stuff on LinkedIn or whatever. Like, well, it's a bit of a grind. It's a bit of, a, it's a bit of a, you know, it's a hassle to have to do this. But, but I don't think very many people have articulated what you just articulated there, and that is by doing it yourself, by doing a little writing, is you're actually refining your own thinking. It's helping you become actually more of an expert over time because you are progressing your own your own thoughts. And I think that's such an incredible, so fantastic point. I'm really glad you made that. Yeah, yeah no, no, thanks, John. Yeah, because th th this, 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 this is, you know, it, it's so. I mean, the other thing to remember, guys, and because I, I, I know everyone thinks they don't know enough, they're not smart enough, mm -hmm. they'll run out of things to say. People are going to laugh at them. They'll get trolled. People, it, you know, it just, it's not impossible. But in my experience, it hardly ever happens. Mm -hmm. I, I do a lot more of this than most, and I'm sure you do a lot, John. Mm -hmm. yeah. We might get the odd email here and there of someone disgruntled, but really, it's very rare. 
because the reality is most of the world's just too busy trying to trying to make sense of their world right um yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah but but fewer fewer than um fewer than about two to three percent of the professionals who are on linkedin actually create content think about that that's a really small number and you know mm -hmm. and some of them creating content verticals a lot of that might just be copying up you know copying and pasting which i call curating someone else's article so hey here was a great article by Don this morning on on the power of uh, resilience to grow business or something and yeah you know, which i think is good i mean that's creating content but that's kind of and it's better to do that than nothing but that's not creating yeah. original content that you've thought about so yeah, I think I think basically that that thinking refining piece is about growing you, and ultimately, I'm mean, we're talking about a bit of professional brand piece, and it's important. But the bigger piece for professionals is we're not growing; we're going backwards in a world that's you know racing on a, an extraordinary rate. So we need to be growing, and I think this is a really good discipline. If you don't love it, and I get a lot of people don't love this, and they find it difficult, and the confidence piece that I've spoken about. But even if you don't love it um you know see it as a way to keep you growing keep you thinking and keep you evolving because if you're doing that when most of your competitors are not then you know that's that's a good path to keeping yourself relevant and successful yeah no i, I, I love it because i mean i think that's exactly it you need to look for competitive advantages and one of the competitive advantages that you can have is if you think a little bit more about the business that you're in or the business you sell into or whatever it is you think a little bit more about it you get a better sense of what's happening in the industry you get a better sense of of things that may be important to your prospects and customers and overall as you said you just start to build that you start to really build on your expertise but you're doing it incrementally in a way that it's not like you're going off and studying for three months i mean you're just doing it a little bit at a time incrementally yeah, and you're you're looking you're looking to solve you're looking to solve problems, you know. And we, and we, we you know, it's, I mean, look at the you know the, the the last twelve months has been extraordinary. I mean, you, you and I, John, it's you know we're probably not dissimilar ages, and uh, you know it's been the most <laughs> without a quite without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, that's that's why I stay quiet when you said your age. I thought uh, you were going to say that. Most, I was yeah, going to go. I better COVID's better admit most, to it. <laughs> yeah, COVID's been the most defining business, you know, transform global transformational event. Of my career, of my of my lifetime, and probably yeah. almost I can't imagine of most people on the on the pod. So you know, if we can't step up now uh, into that and, and look into that, obviously it's a challenge, massive challenge, and I don't minimize that. And it's been very painful. I'm, I'm not trying to minimize that, but there's also an opportunity for up for us to step up. And and I would actually argue there's an, an imperative because if we don't, are we just the old professionals who kind of were okay in an analog world that then. You know, and obviously the main thing that's happened in the COVID piece is we've had acceleration of pre-existing trends. Um, so mm -hmm. now, you know, the digital transformation piece has been massively transformed, which we, which I'm sure you've spoken about with, with in lots of different ways. So now we are in a pretty much an entirely digital world. So if you haven't, yeah, if you haven't got a digital brand or a different a, a place where your your reputation use an old world, you, your reputation is held in a digital space that people can find you, find your business, find what you're about. Um, then that's a problem. That's a problem, uh, and you just you you just you end up being you positioned as one of those old professionals. I used to, I've been here twenty. I've been in the, the I've been in the business for thirty years with the with the, with the, with, the cro with the crossed arms. Yeah, what we used yeah. to do, what I think is, and it's like that's not useful because the world's changed. But if you interrogate all those years of experience, 20, 10, 20, 30 years, and analyze and say, well, okay, what do I learn if I apply what I've seen before? I haven't seen this exactly before, but something like it, you know, and you turn that into wisdom and then wisdom can be actually become things that you, that you actually espouse as maybe potential ways forward. There's a ton of value in that, but just saying I've been in the trade for 30 years, that there's no value in that. You've got to be proactive no, and turn and to your point. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost a turn off if you lead with that because uh, because you say I mean often you know I've been in the business thirty years but if you say you've been in the business thirty years and the the insights and the content and all of that that you're producing shows that you're yeah you've been in the thirty years but thirty years are forward momentum and you're still innovating you're still being a thought leader you're still keeping up to date yeah because otherwise yeah. if you just say that. I've been in the business 30 years, people are going to go, okay, well, then you've got nothing yeah. I'm interested in. Because then, then you sure. become the wise elder. We love wise that we what we value, we will pay a lot of money to work with and get, get product by product from the wise elder. But the grumpy mm -hmm. old person in the corner who's you know, their arms folded, 
there's nothing attractive about that individual or that organization let's be honest you know, we need we, yeah, are, we need nuance obviously i'm not saying everything new is good and everything old is terrible i'm absolutely not saying that but i think people um people who sort of fold their arms around this thing that i don't need i don't need a professional brand it doesn't work social media does some version of that which is i think a very defendably untrue but b it's an excuse for most people that's an excuse yeah. not to put themselves into the place which i get i fully get uh many people find this uncomfortable and what we've tried to do in this short conversation i'm pick that up it's hey don't overthink it don't overdo it just start do some little things and yeah and and just think about starting a conversation and slowly you're building out that shop that online shop window that basically showcases your wares because there's no there's no point in you being brilliant if if no one knows you're brilliant uh, and your shop yeah, window is like one of those old run down those closed shopping malls or you know uh, just this little gem in in a, in a shop window that's, that's dire because your your, your audience yeah. will go past and they'll go to the shop that looks great we all do right yeah no 100 percent. and i and i think you're i think you're so right here in people yeah uh, when when people think about this maybe they get overwhelmed maybe they think it's daunting and everything but to your point is just start small do something small and small and consistent is better than going big and broad and basically like killing yourself and probably you're going to have a better result with the yeah. small but consistent yeah, I, I, I love the um, I, I love the advice of uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson, who's I know he's a polarizing yeah. figure. Um, I think no, he's, just, he's, he's given us another twelve rules just now. Which is, yeah. he's, he's, you know, he's, he's certainly a fascinating guy. But he, he one of I think one of his I don't remember his twelve rules for life. But one of one of his one of the things he advocates, yeah. which is lovely, which is which is aim low but aim up. And I think that's a really yeah. good. That's a great idea. It's like you know, which basically saying don't try and say right. I'm going to do this on Monday. I'm going to write six posts a week. I'm going to do articles. I'm going to create a web because you won't. You'll you'll defeat yourself. You'll disappoint yourself by not achieving those things. And then you'll say, oh, it doesn't work. I give up. Whereas if you were to say, you know what, I quite like that conversation with John and that Mark guy from from Sydney. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have a go. I'm going to have a go. I'll, I'll, I'm just going to I'm going to create one post a week for a month which is about most that would take you an hour a week maximum. And then I'm going to see where I get to. And what you'll actually find is after about week three, you've done one post a week, one post a week, one post a week. And you actually, you know what? That actually, not only is that not that hard, I've actually had a few people connect who I haven't, you know, or, or comment. Hey, John, I haven't heard from you for years. Great to see you doing well. I've had a few comments. And I get a little bit of feedback and affirmation. And okay. And actually I realized I quite maybe even enjoyed this a little bit. Um, and then maybe next week I'll do two posts and so forth and so on. And it's that lovely idea of aim, you know, aim low, but aim up. So it's always got to be up, but low. Don't, don't try and be amazing straight out of the blocks because you won't be. <laughs> and, um, and you'll defeat yourself. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's like anything else. I mean, uh, you know, every journey starts with one step, right? I mean, and there's no point in trying to go from A to Z immediately. It's you're better off... Uh, uh, as you say, taking baby steps um, because it won't overwhelm you and you can measure the results as as you go forward. And it also means because what we're saying here, and I think it's an, one important point to make, as you did earlier, is that we're not saying here, let this take over your life. We're actually saying, don't let this take over your life. Put yeah. it into your work. It, put it in as a natural part of your workflow. Yeah, no, that, and, and that, that's absolutely imperative i mean some people start you this it's very easy to get distracted on this you can spend ages on this and i you know i don't i mean that post i mean it's, it's now it's nine o'clock in the morning here i posted my post on, on linkedin this morning at seven o'clock so I, I see this as something i do outside of if, if you like work hours right and, and i don't devote a lot of time to it i really don't i guess i'm quite good at it i'll, I'll put my hand up to mm -hmm. that but it, it, you, we don't say, hey, take half of Monday to do this. We do not. That's, that's, it's not inverted commas, that kind of work. It's just stuff you do in the morning. You get disciplined about it. Um, you yeah. know, so once, you, once you've done it for a while, it, does, it, does, it, does, it doesn't take very long to do. Uh, but I, I do think it's imperative because you know, the reality is just think of, think of your own pro consideration process, buying a product, uh, checking out a, maybe a potential employee uh, or someone, who, a consultant or whatever it is. What's, the, what's probably the first thing you do? You Google them and you look at the LinkedIn profile. Yep. Am I wrong? Yep. So no, if, not at all. Uh, no. So if your LinkedIn profile is boring, uninspiring, basically some version of name, rank and number and effectively just a digital version of a, of a, of a Word document resume you've had hanging around for 15 years. I mean, does it strike you as even remotely credible that that is enough of a, inverted commas, you know, transformation for you 
and given how much the world's changed in the last 15 years of course it's not it's crazy to think that that suffices with effectively effectively a you know a victorian sort of regimen here is my regimen of yeah. my life you know it doesn't not enough yeah. and we don't and by the yeah. same time i'm not advocating you need to build a website with a whole lot of video you don't but you do need to have and you can easily create an attractive linkedin profile that basically, you know, is the equivalent if I met you at a, at a, at a, at a party or a, a function mm -hmm. or a conference, you go, hey, this guy, this lady, she's kind of interesting. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. had a good, I'd, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to, good conversation, uh, seemed to be smart, loved some of the things she was saying. Let's have, let's continue the conversation. That's all we're doing here, but we're doing it virtually. And if you, if you're yeah. basically boring, which is kind of boring or, or, set, or too cerebral or academic, it's a turn off, right? Who wants to be cornered at a conference by some academic who wants to tell you about their PhD thesis? You don't. So you kind of you do that backward walk away. Exactly. I'm just going to have the toilet. Exactly. Again, exactly. The exactly. Oh, yeah, is the that the time? Pass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, listen, listen, Mark, this has been fantastic. All of Mark's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, Mark, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Okay. Well, the, 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 I think like, I, I do a lot. I do a lot of work in, 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 in this space. Uh, probably the, you know, I'm an ex-corporate leader. Uh, I've worked in the UK. I've worked in Central Europe. I've worked in Russia. And now I work in Australia. Um, and do a lot of work about change and transformation. And, and really that's, at the moment they're doing a lot of work now in help, helping people to mm -hmm. build their professional brand um so there's a couple of things i've got that can help you the first one um i'd love to share john with you it's a free uh it's a free little diagnostic it's called it's called and you get your personal brand report how's that it's free uh it'll take wow. you five minutes you answer nine questions um and it uh, you'll get you'll get a personal brand report that tells you where you are and what i call the influence style and that goes from asleep to awesome so you'll find out whether you're asleep <laughs> or awesome and we'll give you some uh, we'll give you some recommendations about what to yeah. do um hopefully, and you're, hopefully you're not hopefully you're not awesomely asleep yeah exactly, exactly. not awesomely asleep um and then uh, and, and also i'm just about i'm just in the process in about a couple of weeks time i'm actually launching an online program called building your professional brand that uh, that may if you guys want to go any further with that could be something that's of interest but yeah that's that's kind of the, the, the main guts of what i'm about at the moment and i must say what's been fascinating um is that john and i started before we we kind of went live on this talking about you know, the mm -hmm. last 12 months and uh you know notwithstanding covid's been terrible it is terrible please don't miss mishear me on that um covid's been very good for my business I, um, a lot of professionals are realizing this thing that they've been putting off for a long time and i get that lots of people don't love this um that there are people realizing that they, they now that now i need to start working on this so um you know if you feel you're behind the times don't worry a lot of people do well it's never too late to start and as i say, once you get over the hump of having a doing a few posts i think you'll actually find it's actually quite enjoyable and i know you may not believe me but please i, I say that with, the, with with an open heart and, and truth in my truth in my truth in my heart yeah. Well, you know, as they say, Mark, uh, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago, and the second best time is today. I love that. That's a great. I'm, I'm going to steal that. I'm going to use that today. <laughs> well, I, I stole it from someone else. So there you that's go. Good. Yeah. Yeah, but by the way, that's what you do with content. You hear stuff like that, yeah. and then you, 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 you jot it down in Evernote, and then that's a nice little piece of content that you can use. That's how it yeah, works. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, listen, Mark, this has been fantastic. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thanks, Joe.